This is Dr. Stephen Loam, lifestyle medicine cardiologist, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the power of the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine that I just went to in Washington, D.C. this past weekend. I'm going to blow your mind away with just a little bit of a preview of what was talked about and give you a sneak peek as to what my presentation was, which I'm going to share with you on YouTube relatively soon. So stay tuned here. International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine held every year, supported by PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, was just so awesome. I'm just gonna share with you the morning of the first day. It's a three-day conference. We first heard from Dr. Neil Barnard, who's the president of the Physicians Committee. He gave an inspiring presentation about how powerful nutrition can be and how, of course, we're in dire need to change our system more towards lifestyle medicine. We then heard from Cory Booker. He's a senator in the United States who follows a 100% plant-based diet, and he gets it. He gave a very passionate presentation about how we need to change our food system and our healthcare system towards prevention, or we're gonna go broke. At least one person in Washington, D.C. really gets it, and hopefully he's gonna make some really big changes. We then heard from Dr. Eric Rubin. He is the editor-in-chief of the most powerful medical journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, who also said straight out, we need more nutrition publications in our journal because lifestyle medicine is where it needs to go. Then for the next couple hours, we actually had a panel of four different presenters talking about protein. The first was Dr. David Katz. He is the president of the True Health Initiative. And he gave a very, very good overview of protein. He's very charismatic. He speaks so well. He talked about how we know that a plant-based diet and plant protein is the most important. He says that the same dietary pattern that is best for health is also the best for the environment. And he emphasized that, hey man, if we have no planet to live on, who cares about eating healthy because we're all gonna be dead anyways. So we really need to shift our diet for the environment as well. He talked about the uh, different plant proteins and amino acids and how we can get everything from plant sources. And no matter what research study we looked at, every single study shows a plant predominant diet unprocessed is what's best for optimal health. This is Dr. David Katz. He's written lots of books. He was in the Game Changers documentary. Check him out. Then we heard from Min Yang Song, a researcher at the Harvard School of Public Health. He said that we should be embarrassed that the USDA dietary guidelines recommend 67% of our protein come from animal sources, meat, poultry, and eggs. Nuts, seeds, and soy products are recommended only to be 13% of our protein, which is crazy. Beans and legumes are put in the vegetable category, even though they're high protein. He says this really needs to shift around and we need to be more plant protein predominant in our guidelines, just like Canada. He showed these three studies published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, all which showed if you take animal protein out of your diet and substitute it for plant protein, you'll get a huge reduction in mortality and heart disease as well. This shows a summary of this, where if you just removed one serving of processed red meat and replaced it with plant-based protein, you'd have a dramatic 34% reduction in overall mortality. Same thing for unprocessed red meat, and yes, even white meat, poultry. If you took one serving of poultry out and had one serving of plant-based protein instead, your risk of dying goes down. Same with fish, same with eggs, especially for cardiovascular disease, and same with dairy protein. So we need to be more plant protein predominant. He says that public health recommendations need to focus on improving protein sources. Who cares about the amount? We get enough already. Then we heard from Brenda Davis. She's a plant-based registered dietitian who has written lots of books on this topic, including plant-powered protein. She talked about how we need to have plant proteins because of their health benefits and how we can meet our recommended daily allowance in all stages of life. And she really gave a lot of practical tips about optimizing protein sources. She compared legumes versus meat in regards to their health benefits, showing that legumes have fiber, phytochemicals, uh, plant sterols that are very good for you, and meat doesn't have those things. Meat does have saturated fat, cholesterol, endotoxins, and those aren't found in plant-based sources, so we need to focus on the plant sources. She gave a lot of great practical considerations about protein throughout the life cycle and showed the normal amount that we really need to be getting with adult males being around 56 grams per day and females around 46 grams per day. More on that coming up. And then she kind of laid out, here's all the different plant-based sources of protein and here's how you should all balance it. Very well done. She showed specific examples and really helped it just clarify how crazy easy it is for you to get enough protein. As long as you are eating well-balanced, enough calories and unprocessed, you're gonna be fine. 
Then we heard from Dr. Christopher Gardner. He's a professor of nutrition at Stanford University. And this is where he showed, hey, the recommended daily allowance was actually only 25 is all we need to survive. That is two standard deviations on the low end. They decided to set it all the way up on the high end, around 54 grams per day for all different uh, genders and age groups because they wanted some cushion. We really only need 25 grams per day. They set it much higher just to be safe, just to make sure people got enough protein. He showed how all plants have every essential amino acid. So again, as long as we're eating enough calories and unprocessed and well-balanced, we're going to be fine. He showed a standard American diet and how people get way too much protein. That protein there ends up turning into fat. There's no way our body can store excess protein like we can fat and carbs. Carbs are in our glycogen and our muscle and liver uh, and the fat of course you can store that anywhere you want uh, but with protein there's nowhere to store it so it just turns into fat if you eat too much so you don't want that whereas on a whole food plant-based diet here's an example of a 2500 calories of a whole food plant-based diet with 78 grams of protein easy to get your protein requirements so then we heard from the new york hospital system and how they are actually implementing 100% plant-based menu options in all of their New York hospitals, making them plant-based. They did a great job uh, partnering with Sodexo, which is a food service company, showing how phenomenal the food is going to be. Uh, and it's just amazing how uh, Eric Adams, who's the mayor of New York, has a, his own story of going plant-based, reversing his diabetes. He's changing the schools. He's changing the hospitals. He is really leading the country in making cities plant-based, which is just wonderful. Their research showed that there's a 95% acceptance rate of these plant-based meals with a 90% satisfaction once they eat them, resulting in a 36% carbon savings, 17% cost savings, and really saving lives while they're at it. Then we heard from uh, Dustin Harder, who is a chef with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine about this concept called universal meals. Universal meals are meals that are free of the top nine allergens, milk, wheat, eggs, tree nuts, soy, fish, shellfish, sesame, and peanuts. And so this way they can be served anywhere and you don't need to worry about an allergic reaction. You don't need to worry about different religious things, kosher and all those things. It is completely fine for everybody. They published a good article in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine detailing this extensively. And they have 125 free recipes on their website. Check out universalmeals.org. Even better, at the conference, we got to taste quite a few of them. Sodexo came out, the chefs came out, and our lunch the first day of the conference was tasting these universal meals, and it was phenomenal. I couldn't believe how great they taste. They were filling, they were flavorful, 100% plant-based, low-fat. This is the way to go. So that was the first half of the first day of the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine. I hope you liked it. Check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up on this video. And I want to leave you with a little bit of a shot as to what the food looked like at the conference. Check it out next year. Come out to Washington, D.C. I'd love to see you there.